Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, um, but we've basically finished up our review of equations. So I wanted to move back into talking about the stuff that we were doing before uh, all of this nonsense happened. And while we were still in class, we were working on rate of change. We were working on slope. We were going to be moving into graphing. And I really want to move back into that because especially the graphing part of it is something that you are going to need, you're really going to need next year in algebra. So I want to take the rest of this time. This is probably something that's going to take us most of the way through the end of the year. Um, rate of change, slope, graphing, that's all things that are very important, very fundamental in algebra and things that talking to the other algebra, te the algebra teachers that are, you're really going to need to have a good handle on, a good grasp on when you see them next year. So I wanted to take this time really to quickly review the things we are doing before we left so that we can take that and we can move on. So this week we'll be looking <clears throat> at a review of what slope is, the different types of slope, and how to calculate that using the slope formula. But first off, while we're, while we're doing this, so rate of change and slope. Now, rate of change, uh, the definition of it, uh, rate of change is really a ratio or a fraction that shows how one variable changes as another one changes. So as this changes, this also changes. It's, it, and it's, it's a constant change. Really, when we're talking about rate of change, we're talking about, and we're talking about slope, we're talking about the steepness of a line. So I look at my example, over here where I have my, I have my x-axis, I have my y-axis, and then the change between this point and this point is a constant line. That's what's called its slope or its rate of change. And how steep that line is, the, how far it rises and how far out it goes, its rise over run, that's the ratio, that's the rate of change of that line, how steep it is. So <clears throat> on a linear graph, which is what we're looking at, this is called the slope. And you can see in our notes down here, it's a ratio that can be expressed as a few things. It can be the rise over the run. It's the, the change in y over the change of x. It's the vertical change over the horizontal change. It's the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. These are all ways of saying the same thing, how rate of change is a ratio, or it's a, a ratio, a fraction, that shows how, the how much it changes vertically divided by how much it changes horizontally. And these are all things that we talked about and all things that we were doing before we left in March. Now, slope, similar to rate of change, the, for, for what we are doing, rate of change and slope are kind of gonna be used interchangeably. They're gonna be used as synonyms. And as you see, I'm gonna, change this to yellow. So it's written as a ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change or the rise and the run between two points. And they can be any two points on the line. So on the example we have over here, we have a lower line that was, uh, we showed as X1 and Y1. And the higher of the two lines, which we, Distinguishes x2, y2, and it could have we could have picked a point right here. We could have picked a point over here. We could have picked a point here. You can pick any point on this line, but we need two points to figure out the change in distance between both of them. The change of the the vertical change over the horizontal change, and this change is going to remain 
constant for any two points. So the change between, I'll put, I'm gonna make this red, the change between this point and this point is the cha same change between this point and this point, and the same change between this point and this point. The fraction, the written in simplest form, the ratio is the same between all of these points, but it may be four over three, it may be 12 over nine, but as we talked in previous lessons, and especially uh, I know that Mr. Earl talked about this a lot when he was going over equivalent fractions, four over three and 12 over nine are equivalent fractions. If I go up four units and over three units, it's the same ratio as going up 12 units and over nine units. The vertical change over the horizontal change, uh, it is constant. So, as, our, as your x coordinate changes, the y coordinate is also going to change. And vice versa, as the y coordinate changes, the x coordinate is going to change. So, we're going to see there's four different types of slope. And this is true for all four types, with some exceptions. But if we have a, vert a positive or a negative slope, that change, whether it's up, whether it's down, that change is going to be constant. So as your x coordinate changes, the y coordinate is also going to change. And slope is written as a fraction in simplest form, when, meaning that you've reduced that fraction. So like I showed in, like I showed in the, previ the previous one, so if my slope, if I have a rise of four and a run of three, that's the same as if I started at this point and went up 12 units and then over nine units or if I went up eight units and over six units. All of these are saying the same thing, like depending on which point I choose along this line, my rise over my run. And we, the variable that we use when we're talking about slope and it depends, if we're using the slope formula, if we're using slope intercept form, the variable that we use throughout pre-algebra, throughout algebra, and throughout calculus to represent slope is going to be the variable m. So in this mx plus b, if m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, the variable that we will always use for slope is m. So we'll get into later what we're going to be using the B for. But for this, what I want you to remember, what I want you to know, slope and rate of change, we're really saying the same thing. It's how much our vertical changes over how much our horizontal changes. So I'm going to keep moving on. So what does this look like in real life? Well, last week you actually saw this question and without knowing it, you were going to be doing a proportion. You were going to be looking at the vertical change over the horizontal change, but in this sense, it was a proportion. And proportions are kind of like what we're looking at. So we had that on the April 14th, the question that you were given was that Bobby drove 110 miles and his car used five gallons of gas. How many miles can he drive with 16 gallons of gas? Now, many of you, and you saw, we set this up as a proportion of, what, you see, uh, I'll do that real quick. 110 over five equals X over 16. And when we did the math, we found out that he could drive 352 miles. I'm not going to go back and redo all of that. But we can also see this as a proportion. So I set up like my x axis 
and I look at this is miles and this is gallons. If I have five gallons here, 16 up here, and then 110 miles here, 352. I can graph this. If he's going zero miles, he's going to be using up zero gallons of gas. But if he goes 110 miles, he's going to use up five gallons of gas. If he goes 352 miles, he's going to use 16 gallons of gas. I can also look on this line, which I apologize is drawn very poorly. Uh, I could figure out what 10 gallons get, 10 gallons of gas would get him, or how far he could go on 200 miles, things like that. This rate of change, how much gas he's using versus how far he's going, that is going to, in this situation, that stays constant. Now, we're not taking into account uh, road conditions or whether or not this is he's highway driving or city driving, none of that. But in a perfect world, the amount of miles he drives, the amount of miles he drives and the amount of gas he uses is constant. The farther he drives, the more gas he's going to use. And that kind of makes sense, which is going to, which, I showed you this because this is going to lead into what you actually have to do. So I'm constantly getting the question, Mr. When am I going to use this in real life? Or when am I going to see this in real life? Or what does any of this have to do in real life? Well, what you're looking at right now are five pictures of slope, of rise over run, of rate of change in real life. I have, we've got a roller coaster. Oops. I had the wrong thing selected, my apologies. So I've got a roller coaster, which looks like this is the, this can either be the opening hill or something else. I have a person on a mountain bike going up a hill. I have a picture of a truck going down a hill. I have this guy in a little red car going down a hill. But then I also over here have a different kind of slope. This is a picture of the horizon. This is also slope. Each one of these is a picture in real life of what we see of slope or of steepness of a hill, steepness of something either going up, going down, or even the flat horizon. So there are my drawings which this is something, again, <clears throat> excuse me, if you need a second to pause the video and look at this, I'm sharing all of these notes with you, but what you're looking at here is something that came right from our notebooks, and I know you guys all wrote this down, or at least most of you have written this down somewhere, the four types of slope. Positive slope, which is going up, negative, zero and undefined. Which that is supposed to say straight up and down, but it looks really bad. Straight up and down. So positive slope, if I'm following, so if I'm going from left to right, if I look at this line, it looks like it's going up. And remember, and just like we read books left to right, just like we read anything, we read graphs, we read slope left to right. So if I look at my negative slope, if I'm going from left to right, it looks like it's going down. If I start left to right here and I have a flat slope, I'm given, that means that I have a zero slope. Y equals, and that'll be a number, like Y equals four or Y equals like 16. So with a zero slope, the equation will look like Y equals blank and it'll be a number. There won't be any coefficients, there won't be any, or excuse me, there won't be any variables, it'll just be a constant. Y equals 
4, y equals 0, y equals 7. So for a zero slope, the equation will just be that, y equals something. And for undefined, it's going to be the same, only it's x equals 4, x equals 0, x equals 17. So depending on, depending on what you see, your slope is either going to be positive, negative, zero, or undefined. It really just, it depends on, it depends on what you're seeing. So if it looks like it's going from left to right, if it looks like it's going up, that's a positive slope. If it looks like it's going down, negative slope. If it looks like just a flat line, horizontal line, zero slope. And if it is a flat line that is going up straight up and down, there's no tilt to it at all. That is an undefined slope. It means that we can't figure out what it is. A zero slope, it, it's flat like the horizon, like a pancake, like a table. Um, interesting that I should say horizon, pancake, or table. Because what you're going to be working on for the next couple of days are ways of seeing slope. And I know that you guys, we, we talked about this, our slope mountain. The first part of our mountain looks like it's going up. That's our positive slope. Uh, we crest, we go over the hill, and I'm just actually gonna, I'm gonna make a little, uh, make our mountain look, look like a little, uh, little mountain here. See if it, if it looks like a mountain peak. As I'm going up the mountain, I've got my little guy, he's hiking, he's tired. But then as he goes down, he puts on some skis and starts going down and the wind's whipping through his hair. He gets on to a zero slope on a, on a bicycle. And then last but not least, our undefined slope, which is up and down. So here's the, a way of looking at the four types of slope, positive, negative, zero, and undefined. So all slope is going to fall into one of those four categories. Even if it's something that looks like it's vertical but isn't quite, that still has a positive slope. If it's something that is looks like it's almost going straight down but not a full, vertical if it's just like that it has a negative slope if it's flat it has a slope of zero but if it is straight up and down that's that undefined slope and again slope rate of change it's how far vertically i'm gonna oops where's my like how far vertically we're going over how far horizontally we're going. And even if we are going in a negative direction, that's still a vertical direction. It's just in the opposite. So it really depends on what, we're look what you're looking at, whether it has a positive, a negative, a zero, or an undefined slope. So your assignment, what you, I'm gonna move, oops move this to make sure that's out of the way. Uh, you are going to be given a slideshow template and it's going to say rate of change in real life assignment or slope in real life assignment. I want you to find examples either from around your house, around your neighborhood or um, pictures that you found that show slope and show the four different types of slope. There's going to be four pictures, there's going to be four slides, one for positive, one for negative, one for zero, and one for undefined. Now on previous slides, you saw examples of three out of the four in real life. But I chose this picture as an example of negative slope. So if you look at, if you look at the picture, I have my one of my daughter's toys, her picture of her 
one of her little Svens. Uh, and if you look, Sven is facing it down the railing. So if I were to use this as my example of negative slope, I would put this picture in the, in the slides like I did. And then on the slide, it will say, how does this picture show negative slope? And my answer, I wrote this picture of Sven shows negative slope because he is facing down the railing. We know that negative means he's looking, he's facing down. But if I were to turn him around and have him facing up, that would be positive slope. So if I turned Sven around and had him facing up, it shows negative slope because he's going down. Or I would have to flip this around and show, oh, he's facing down. And if I look at it left or right, it goes down. Because while I'm looking at it, uh, even though it looks like it's going up, I look at where his eyes are and his eyes are facing down. So that shows that Sven is going in a negative direction. So like always, if you have any questions about what you're supposed to be doing, email me, send me a message on my uh, Google Voice, uh, get in touch with Mr. Earl or Ms. Bergio, somebody else that you know can help you out because we really are here to, we really are here to help. And it may seem like I went through this quickly, but again, this is stuff that we've already done. Like you've seen this before. This isn't the first time. So good luck. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the pictures of stuff that you found around your house, around the neighborhood. Um, and like always, please come and find me. I really am here to help. All right. Good luck. Have a great rest of your day. And in the, in the assignment, make sure that you are finding examples of all four types of slope in the real world. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I will see you soon.